Today, we're talking the top buys and sells for fantasy football ahead of week seven. I recommend watching the video all the way through because at the end, I'm going to go into rapid fire mode to give you three bonus buys and a bonus sell. Also, make sure you're using our trade calculator, yardsperfantasy.com, to make sure you get the best deals on your week seven trades. Let's go. My top buy for week seven fantasy football is Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk has clearly established himself as the number one wide receiver in San Francisco. He has out-targeted Debo Samuel in all but one game, and he has 37 targets for the season compared to Debo's 32. And that includes Samuel leaving early in week six and Brandon Ayuk missing week three altogether. Brandon Ayuk currently sits top five in target share and top 10 in targets per route. He also leads all NFL wide receivers in team air yard share, and he's top three in yards per route. While the box score showed a pedestrian four catches for 76 yards in week six, it could have been so much better. Quarterback Brock Purdy had a rare poor performance against a tough Browns defense, and Ayuk still managed to command 10 targets on the day. No other 49ers pass catcher had more than four. Ayuk was also second on the week to Marquise Brown with 158 air yards, which accounted for more than 65% of the team's total air yards. The point is, better days are coming for Brandon Ayuk. That will especially be true if either or both of Christian McCaffrey or Debo Samuel are forced to miss games with their respective injuries. But even when those guys are on the field, Brandon Ayuk has had no trouble commanding targets and making plays. He currently sits at wide receiver 15 in fantasy points per game, despite not having scored a touchdown since week one. Those will come. This is a top tier offensive unit and will provide plenty of opportunities for Brandon Ayuk to make plays and score fantasy points. Another wide receiver I'm trying to buy in fantasy football ahead of week seven is Jackson Smith and Jigba. It has been a slow start to the career of Jackson Smith and Jigba. Many had high hopes for a rookie season breakout considering how impressive of a prospect JSN was coming out of Ohio State. However, it can't be all too surprising that it's taken a little bit of time. Jackson Smith and Jigba barely played football in 2022, missing most of his junior season with an injury. He's also in a wide receiver room that includes DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett on a team that has historically played very little 11 personnel. However, that appears to be changing. In the first four weeks, the Seahawks ran 11 personnel just 53.2% of the time. That ranked 23rd in the NFL. But then coming out of the week five bye, that rate spiked to 71.4%, which was 10th in the NFL. And that's per Corbin Young on Twitter. Follow my guy. And even before the bye week, Jackson Smith and Jigba's role was expanding. His route participation spiked from 63.2% in week three, it was about the same in weeks one and two. That went up to 75% in week four. And then out of the bye, it jumped up again to 89.1%. What is even more encouraging about that is that both DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett also ran 89.1% of the routes. All three wide receivers ran 39 routes. Now, JSN was still a distant third in targets, but he had his highest yardage total and best fantasy output of the season. Let me also add that prior to the bye, the Seahawks were using Jackson Smith and Jigba very close to the line of scrimmage. He was seeing no downfield looks. In fact, his longest reception in week four was three yards, and his longest of the season was 16. His average target depth was just 3.2 yards. But like his route participation, JSN's average target distance shot up in week six. It actually more than doubled to 7.6. And that got him a long reception of 18 yards. This is just another sign that bigger weeks are coming because he's not just getting more opportunity, he's also getting more valuable opportunities. The manager in your league who drafted him has likely gotten impatient and frustrated with his lack of useful fantasy weeks. They're probably even to the point of considering dropping him, but they're not looking beyond the box score to see the role expanding and the encouraging data points that we are seeing. So take advantage of that and throw out an offer or get him tossed into a bigger trade. He might not become a must start unless there's a Lockett or a Metcalf injury, but he will absolutely give you usable weeks as a wide receiver three or a flex play moving forward. And if one of those guys do miss time, oh, it's on. And if you believe that this is the week that Jackson Smith and Jigba scores his first NFL touchdown, then you can play this pick'em at Underdog Fantasy. Lock in your pick now or draft a whole starting lineup for week seven on Underdog Fantasy and use promo code YARDSPER to get a $100 deposit match and a free mystery pick'em. Another guy I'm trying to buy ahead of week seven in fantasy football is Devontae Smith. 
Devontae Smith has been frustrating to roster in fantasy football this season. His managers are losing patience and they're ready to rid him from their rosters. That's where we jump in and we make an offer. While his week six outing was as disappointing as any, it was also encouraging. Devontae Smith led the Eagles with 11 targets and a 25% target share. He was also top five in the entire NFL in air yards, and he's now gone over 100 air yards in four of six games. Now, I know you're thinking, oh, air yards, air yards, that doesn't matter if he's not getting actual yards. And I'm with you. I'm with you. But air yards and target share are two of the most predictive metrics for future performances. His route participation, average target distance, and catch rate are all in line with what he did last season. We already know he's a streaky wide receiver as far as fantasy production. We have to accept that and embrace the volatility. He has shown us in the past he is more than capable of weak winning performances. With upcoming games against the Dolphins, Commanders, and Cowboys, Devontae Smith is in a good spot for his first boom game of 2023. Buy now before it happens. Now a guy I'm selling ahead of week seven in fantasy football is Damian Pierce. Something is happening in Houston and we need to talk about it. Things have been trending poorly for starter Damian Pierce all season. I told you to sell him in one of these videos multiple weeks ago. While the role has been there and the offense has exceeded expectations, Damian Pierce has yet to do much of anything. He has been wildly inefficient as a runner, averaging fewer than three yards per carry through six weeks. And he scored outside the top 20 fantasy running backs in all but two games and he scored fewer than 10 fantasy points four times. And then in week six, the Texans essentially said they've seen enough. So for the first time, Devin Singletary led the backfield in snaps. He played 54%, while Damian Pierce was relegated to 33%. His previous season low was 45%, and he hadn't been under 50% since all the way back in week two. Singletary also got more involved in the passing game, running a route on 50% of CJ Stroud's dropbacks. It appears the team has lost faith in its young running back and is going to give Devin Singletary a shot to be the guy. And in a surprisingly good offense with an offensive line that is getting healthier, Devin Singletary could become the more viable Texans running back for Austin fantasy football if this trend continues. Now, Singletary is a small and slow running back, a combination that is very undesirable for fantasy purposes. So his ceiling isn't all that high, but he's worth an ad. And as for Damian Pierce... It may be time to cut your losses and sell low. You should also be selling Jamison Williams. What we saw from Jamison Williams in week six, that's exactly what he is. He's a one-dimensional deep threat who's going to catch the occasional long touchdown. However, outside of that, he's not going to give you much. That makes him impossible to play in fantasy football because there's no way of knowing when he's going to give you 12 points versus when he's going to give you zero. While fantasy gamers want him to be so much more, Jamison Williams has shown us no signs that he's anywhere near ready for an expanded role. In week five, he ranges 15 routes. Then he saw his role pulled back when Amon Ross St. Brown returned in week six, down to nine routes. And if we look back at last season, it was much of the same. Jamison Williams was active for six games, weeks 13 through 18 in 2022. It was the most important stretch of the season for the Lions as they were vying for a playoff spot. And yet Jamison Williams could barely crack the lineup. And over those six weeks, Jamison Williams never topped a 25% snap share. He was targeted nine total times and he caught just one pass. He never ran more than nine routes in a game and he scored zero fantasy points in four of six outings. Fantasy gamers use his injury recovery as an excuse for that. But what now? He has no excuse for why he's playing such a small role. A first rounder can't get ahead of Josh Reynolds? Or Khalif Raymond? Come on. The Lions used a top 12 pick on a change-up running back in 2023, and they did it with a one-dimensional field stretcher the year prior. Jamison Williams is not ready for a full workload. I see no signs of that changing anytime soon. So take advantage of the long touchdown and sell him to someone in your league who believes that's going to happen every week. Before we get to the bonus buys and sells for week seven, if you're enjoying this video and you find it at all valuable, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm pumping out content like this all season long. And drop your trade questions in the comments. I'll try to get to all of them. Welcome to rapid fire mode. It's the bonus buys. And we're going to start 
with Michael Mayer. Now, this one should be obvious. I mean, he just caught five passes for 75 yards. And most of us are pretty desperate at tight end at this point anyway, right? You might have even been able to get him off your waiver wire, depending on how deep your league is. But at this point, he should be rostered in all leagues. So you got to trade for him. He's been targeted nine times over the last two weeks after never having more than one in a game prior to that. And he ran 66.7% of the routes in week six. That's a big uptick in roll, but it also tells us that there's room to expand that role even greater. This was a dominant producer at Notre Dame over the last few years. Great prospect coming out of college. Go buy Michael Mayer. The breakout is happening. I'm also trying to buy Jonathan Taylor. It's happening. After playing just 15% of the snaps in his first game back, his role expanded up to 42% in week six. That indicates to me that week seven, week eight, we're going to start to see the full Jonathan Taylor bell cow workload. And even in a part-time role in week six, he ran 22 routes, which is 36% of the dropbacks, and he commanded an 11.5% target share. We know what he is. We know what Jonathan Taylor is, and he no longer has that threat at the goal line of Anthony Richardson vulturing touchdowns. It sucks for those of us who love Anthony Richardson, but oh, it is great news for Jonathan Taylor. I'm also trying to buy T. Higgins. It's been a brutal year for T. Higgins between the struggles of the offense, dropping a bunch of passes, and then the ribs injury. He came back at week six and he played a part-time role, which was not a surprise. But in playing a part-time role at week six tells me that he's probably going to be ready to play a full-time role in week seven. Joe Burrow looks fully healthy. The calf is good. He's moving around good. The Bengals offense is on the rise. They're not all the way back yet, but they're on the rise. We know what T. Higgins is. His managers are frustrated, which opens up the buy window to go buy low. I'm taking advantage. For bonus sales, I got one guy for you this week. It is Zach Ertz. For anybody who is really struggling at tight end early in the season, Zach Ertz was an exciting pickup. He wasn't getting a ton of yards but he was getting a ton of targets. And in PPR leagues, that's really all we need from the tight end position. However, the Cardinals seem to be realizing that he is dustier than dust. They pulled back his role pretty significantly in week six. Now, we still saw five targets. So some people in your league might still see some value in him if they are desperate for the tight end position. But Trey McBride took more snaps, ran just two fewer routes, and had the same number of targets. The torch is being passed, Get out from Zach Ertz before he has zero value. Hey, if you like that video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment on what you want me to talk about next. You can find all my stuff, my rankings, articles, podcasts, more videos like this on yardsperfantasy.com. Just download the Yards Per Fantasy app and we thank you for your support.